We're taking the battery out of its casing. We can see that it's wrapped in a blue heat shrink film. So let's go ahead and tear this off and look at what's underneath. Get all this in here. Very nice. This is very well packaged. This is nice and tight on here. You can also see that we have these EVA foams on here. Keep the battery from bumping around anyway. Those are glued on really nicely as well. Okay. Now that the heat shrink is removed, we can see that this is covered also in a white, or sorry, in a yellow epoxy board. To get through this epoxy board now, we're gonna go ahead and slice through this nice taping job that they have up here in the corners. Let's see if I can sleep this in here. There we go. Oh, how elegant. Just cut that off. Keep going, going down the corners. Looks like we have more foam on the inside to keep it nice and padded. Beautiful. I'm going to come in, cut off these on the back end. And then this one should just pop out. Okay, so we can take this out, remove that. And here we have the battery without the board. Looks like we still have some foam on the outside to keep it from shaking inside. Uh, so let's go ahead and just tear up some of this foam and take a look at what's underneath here. Oh, here we go. After tearing it apart a little bit more, we can see that the main positive cable is a six gauge silicone insulated wire with a 200 degrees Celsius insulation rating, which is pretty standard. The negative is comprised of four 10 gauge silicone insulated wires. And in addition, both the positive and negative are wrapped to protect them from the other cables. We can also see that the heat shrink silicon covering the connection service for the BMS right here to secure the screws. We can see that all the wiring for the battery is crimped, not soldered, which is great. Industry standard and marine system manuals always recommend crimped lugs because it's a mechanical connection gas tight cold weld will always be better than solder. And all the wires are not randomly placed, they're all fixed neatly, which looks perfect. Next, we can see that the battery has two temperature sensors. The two sensors can work with a high temperature cutoff and a low temperature cutoff. The high temperature cutoff is 75 degrees Celsius and the low temperature cutoff is zero degrees Celsius plus or minus four for charge and negative 20 degrees Celsius plus or minus four for discharge. You can see them under here. They're well secured. Here they are. All right, we're gonna test our temperature sensors now. So we've got our little charging station here. We're gonna charge at 14.6 volts, connect our positive and our negative. And you can see we've got the five amps going through the battery right now. For the high temperature, we're going to use this heat gun here. Turn it on. I'm gonna bring that up to these temperature sensors. Once we hit about 75 degrees Celsius, those should trip and that amp meter should drop. There it goes. We've already hit zero. So that high temperature sensor already tripped. All right, we're gonna test our low temperature sensor now. So again, we're gonna turn on our charging station, connect our positive here and our negative there. And then we have this glass of cold water. We're currently at 14.6 volts. We're coming up to our five amps. And we're gonna dip our temperature sensors here into this glass of ice water here. Once that hits about zero degrees Celsius, plus or minus four, it should trip and cut off the battery. There it goes, right on time. 
Very happy today to have tested the Vader 12 volt 100 amp battery. It worked better than expected. The low cutoff and high cutoff temperature check was fantastic. It comes in amazing packaging and everything about it was extremely impressive.